If you want to know how to pick the best ice climbing axe, then keep watching. But before I answer that question, if you are new to alpine climbing or ice climbing, or maybe you've been climbing for a few years, remember to subscribe to our channel to receive more videos about gear advice and alpine and ice climbing around Europe. So a few weeks ago I did a comparison between the mountaineering axe and the technical ice climbing axe, but this time I'll try to look at what are the actual details around the technical ice climbing axe and how do you select and pick out the best one for you. So the four different ice climbing axes we're going to look at, that's the Gravel Tech Machine, the Petzl Namek, the Black Diamond Fuel and the Petzl Quark. But let's start by taking a look at the different features that we'll be looking at. First of all, ice climbing axes are rated according to their strength. They can either be B rated or T rated based on tests on their shaft and their pick. A B rated axe would be tested against 280 kilos of force, while a T rated would be tested against 400 kilos. So why does this even matter? Well, it matters because when you're doing hard ice and you repeatedly bang your ice axe against the ice, um, this could eventually break it if it's not strong enough. And actually, if you're doing a mixed climbing as well, where you have to use rock and you have to torque the ice climbing axe or you have to, to pull on rock with the axe, uh, it could eventually break as well. So the second thing you have to notice about ice climbing axes is the curvature of the shaft. This is also what you refer to as the aggressiveness. The right amount of aggressiveness helps on getting more bite into the ice and that's why it's really important that you get the right curvature of the shaft. Too less curvature means that the ice axe uh, potentially could uh, pop out of the ice and you would take a fall. And too much would actually mean that you can't get the right angle for penetrating the ice. So what we obviously want is the right amount of curvature. So I've brought four different technical ice climbing axes to show and they all have the right amount of curvature. So the third thing you need to look for, that's the teeth and the blade itself. So the technical ice climbing axe has a very different blade than the traditional mountaineering axe. As you can see, the blade is much sharper and the teeth are much more aggressive and sharp as well. And this is all for penetrating the ice more easily. However, some of the technical ice climbing axes actually have a bit of a different design than others. So the Black Diamond Fuel has a much sharper and, and uh, narrow pick than the others, which is insanely awesome for penetrating ice. Whereas you can see on the Gravel Tech Machine and the Petsonomics that the design is a bit different. And this is good for mixed ground where we have to climb on rock as well. Um, but still penetrates ice quite easily. And speaking of blades, you need to keep them sharp. With a blunt blade, you won't be able to penetrate the ice efficiently, and that will just make a very, very poor climbing experience. So there are a bit of a maintenance when handling ice axes. I'll be doing a vlog on a later time regarding how you actually maintain your ice axes and how you keep the pick sharp. But if you have some tips of your own, leave a comment below. So one feature that's often overlooked, that's the eye at the top of the shaft. This is for placing a carabiner, so you can use the axe as a dead man anchor by burying it in the snow. But one thing I also use the eye for, that is to stash my ice axe on an ice clipper on my harness when I need both hands. So having a big eye like the Gravel Tech Machine is definitely something that would help. And as you can see on the Petzl Nomics and the Petzl Quark, the eye is much smaller, making it a bit harder to clip it on your harness or getting a carabiner through. Most ice axes are modular built, meaning that you can actually switch different parts if you want to. Like the Gravel Tech Machine, where you can get different blades for mixed climbing or for dedicated ice climbing, or you can add a hammer or an axe. Or with the Petzlonomics, where you can actually add some weights to get some more swing. On mixed terrain, you might need to place a bulldog in an icy crack or in frozen turf. And then a hammer would be really efficient. Or if you have to dig out some space to pitch a tent, uh, then the ads would uh, help you doing that. 
but if you're looking for a dedicated ice climbing axis, a hammer and adds are less important. So another thing when choosing the best ice and climbing axe, that is to look at the handle itself. You need to consider that you're climbing in, in thick gloves uh, and you need a handle that could suit that. On some of the ice climbing axes, like the like Diamond Fuel, you can actually adjust the handle by setting in uh, some small rings, something that I really, really like about that design, as opposed to the Gravel Tech machine that you can't adjust at all. Something that's pretty important for alpine climbing, that is the spike at the bottom. Some ice climbing axes have these, others don't. But what you use this feature for is when you're hiking in and you're crossing a glacier, you can use the ice climbing axe as a kind of a trekking pole uh, to help you keep your balance. So I guess whether you want to uh, prioritize this is something that relies on whether you're doing dedicated ice climbing or you might see yourself doing some alpine climbing too. If you're new to ice climbing, I would definitely recommend that you climb with leashes. A leash is an elastic string that attaches the ice climbing axe to your harness, meaning that if you should take a fall or you drop your ice axe, it is not lost. And even though I become more experienced, I must admit that I still use uh, leashes at some point of times, um, especially on multi-pitch ice climbing where I don't want to lose my ice axes. You attach the leashes to the ice climbing axe on the spike at the bottom, where there usually is an eye for that. But as you can see on the Petzlonomics, this kind of lags. There's a hole in the handle itself, which I really don't understand why they put there, because it will just be in the way for your hand. But as you can see both for the Petzl Quark, the Gravel Tech Machine and the Black Diamond Fuel, there's plenty of room for that. So I really hope that these tips have helped you out on deciding which are the best ice climbing eggs for you. And if not, uh, leave a comment below with your questions and let's answer them together.